of our holiday stream fest programs and you have any questions also online you may find our resource book a flurry of science and family fun and each activity that we've done is in here with instructions and supply lists all the way through from pink snow to star watching and kindness countdowns all of our activities are in this booklet and that's available online or you can pick up a physical copy here at the children's museum um, throughout the holiday season so thanks again for joining us for holiday stream fest hey welcome to another episode of holiday stream fest today we are talking about the stars the universe astronomy and we're going to do some activities that you and your family can do together to talk about stars and constellations and all things that are in the night sky and the first one we're going to do is called stars in jars and it's it's a great activity to kind of shine up your whole room and to do this activity you're going to need a disposable aluminum pie pan a jar because it's stars in jars um, a ruler a poker, <laughs> this is just a, bar uh, uh, a barbecue skewer, and some markers, and I would suggest Sharpie markers because they're permanent and they won't smear when we're marking on things. You're gonna need some scissors and a spoon or a flat big stick. A ruler would actually work as well. And um, in our resources packet, we printed out some constellation patterns. And oh yeah, and a towel because it helps protect your tabletop. Okay, so let's get started. Let's make a star constellation jar. So here's my pie pan. And the only kind of thing that you're gonna wanna remember is your aluminum bottom to the pie pan has gotta be bigger or taller than your jar. And other than that, you'll be good. So an adult might have to help cut this pan sides right off because we don't need huh, it's making a lot of noise we don't need a lot of the edge sticking up like that we just need a strong bottom so I'm cutting the edges with a big pair of scissors right off and it's a little sharp after you cut it so watch out you don't want to hurt yourself Ta-da, cut that right off, and I'm gonna put it down over here. Okay, so now my pie pan has kind of ruffly patterns on it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is flatten out those patterns. And you can do it with a spoon, put it down on your table and just rub a spoon all across the ruffles and the ridges that they put in that pan to make it stronger. And I'm straightening out all of those edges. Just like that. Can't get out the letters in the middle, but I think that'll be all right. I wonder what my ruler would do. I'm gonna go like this. Ooh, that helps too. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so now we're gonna put this inside the jar, but not quite yet, but we wanna make sure we have the right size. So I'm gonna measure it around. and I'm gonna put it inside the jar. So I want it to fit inside the jar, so I wanna do is cut it r right off the bottom like that, and then cut it all the way across. So it's gonna fit in the jar. Oops, there. Now when that rolls up, that'll fit right inside that jar. So there we have a piece of aluminum that's gonna go inside the jar. Now the next thing you do, is pick your constellation that you want to poke holes in your aluminum. And I'm going to do, of course, my favorite one, the Big Dipper. That's what I'm going to do first, and that's a nice, easy one. So I'm going to find part of my, I'm going to place that down there, place my constellation picture right over the top of the aluminum, and I'm going to poke some holes in it like this right through all the way through the paper and then we're going to check and see if it went through the aluminum foil it may not have and then if it hasn't 
then we'll pick it up and do it again. Oh, it did. Check it out. I've got big dipper holes in my <laughs> aluminum foil. I'm going to make them a little bigger. And so that's kind of where this towel comes in because I don't want to poke holes in the table. Now you can also do um, a nail instead of a barbecue skewer, if you like. There you go. There's the big dipper. Now let's see what oh, I'm going to do. Cassiopeia, that's another one of my favorite star constellations to find in the northern sky. And I'm going to do that right there. Poke, poke, poke. And it's, a, it's Cassiopeia, and I always call it the lazy W because <laughs> it looks like a W. Now let's see if they all went through. Oh, they did. I got holes, but I want them bigger. I want them a lot bigger so that they'll let some light through so you'll be able to see this in a dark room like that. There we go. So now I have Cassiopeia and the Big Dipper. What am I going to do next? How about Orion? That's another one that you always can see in the winter time. I'm going to do Orion right here. Make sure it's there. Oh, I can't see it. I've got it backwards. There we go. Okay, Orion right there. And I'm going to poke my holes right through Orion's belt and all of the stars that you can see when you look up to find Orion. There we go. Now let's see if they all went through. Oh, they did. So I'm going to make my holes bigger with my barbecue skewer, skewer or a nail. That would work too. And then I think I'm going to do one more. Andromeda right here on the edge. Okay, right there. Lots of constellations. Okay, here we go. Now, constellations are just a pattern of stars that people group together. Sometimes they told stories and legends about them. Famous warriors like Orion or actually the Big Dipper is part of a bigger constellation called Ursula Major, which is the Big Bear. Okay, whoa, that's a weird one, but that came through all right. And I am going to make those bigger. Now the next thing I'm going to do is those are the ones that, those are the constellations that made the shapes and the patterns but I want a lot more stars in my sky. So I'm going to make a lot of little holes, just random. Whoops. <laughs> I was. OK. Why won't that go through? That paper really worked pretty good. Maybe I'll do that again, just through the paper. I'm trying to make little holes. Yeah, there we go, just random. That works kind of around the constellations, wherever you didn't put a whole bunch of the constellations. You can put more stars, just a few here and there. Whoop. It's a little hard, Ah, because there's lots. There's billions and trillions and jillions of stars in the sky. OK, so you've got lots of holes. And I'm going to flatten it out just a little bit because I want to put it inside my jar now. So I'm going to flatten it and stick it inside the jar. Well, first I'm going to roll it around the jar so, because when we were punching the holes, it got flattened out a little bit. There we go. All right. And I'm going to stick it inside the jar. It's just like that. Mine doesn't quite come together. If, you, if yours does that kind of thing, you can either put a scrap down in there or you can tape it so it will just rest in there a little bit smaller. So I think I'll just put a little scrap in there by cutting it. Let's see. Yep. And I might have to take that out and tape it in. But you want it. Yep. There we go. Yeah, 
you can tape a little scrap right there to cover that up. Now that's not going to stay for me right now until I get out some tape, but I will do that later. And then what you do is you take a little tea light candle and you stick it inside your jar. And in a dark room, the light, whoops, I'm going to put two of them in there, will show through the holes in the constellations that you made. Let's see what happens. Can you see a flicker in there? <laughs> there we go. Can you start to see the flicker of light? Now you can also take a flashlight and stick it in there. But there you are. There's your stars in a jar. And it's a very good way to learn the patterns of the constellations. I have lots of fun with this one. And depending on the strength of your light inside the jar, you will be able to see the light travel and maybe land on your wall and create a pattern on your wall of the constellations. So there's stars in a jar. And we'll get rid of those things because i got a couple more things to show you. One of the other projects that I think you might have fun doing is painting a galaxy together. So I've got a canvas and some brushes. And you can give everyone in your family a brush to do this. This is a fun way to paint. I've got some brushes and a toothbrush and a canvas. Or you could paint any piece of poster board black and start that way. And this is a fun thing to do. So um, we're going to paint a galaxy. And what I'm going to do, I have some squeeze bottles. I'm going to put blobs of paint in random spots all over my canvas, just like this. I'm going to do some black, squeeze. Whoops, this is trailing. And all over my canvas, just little blobs of paint. One there, one there. And your whole family can help by putting blobs of paint everywhere in different colors. And I'm going to use a lot of different colors because there's a lot of different colors in the universe. When you start looking at stars, stars are different colors. And planets are, have lots of different colors because all the elements shine with their own color. Woohoo! <laughs> and it's all up there. So I'm going to put a lot of black here and there because you, this black is not coming out. <laughs> I might have to open this jar. Come on. Blobs of paint all across. Okay. Whoa. Okay. And let's see. What haven't I done? Oh, I have some more colors too. And I didn't have any more spray jars, so I am going to use spoons to make lots of different color everywhere. And how about some orange? We're going to see how this mixes together to make a great galaxy painting. A little bit of green here and there. And oh, what didn't I do? I didn't do any light blue. And wow. <laughs> I didn't do a whole lot of orange either. So we're going to do some more orange in between there. And I think I need some more dark blue over here. Little squirts of paint everywhere. How is this going to look like a galaxy? We're going to find out. And I think we need, whoa, come on. Here we go. Come on. Oop, oh, whoa. <laughs> That's a silly one. OK, how about a little white in between there? Dabs of white here and there. And your whole family can help 
dab things, you know, and I am going to put some more black on this, even though the squirt bottle part does not work very well, because when you look into space, whoo, you see a lot of black. <laughs> so we'll put some of that around. So how is this going to turn out? That's the fun part, I wonder. So now, you give everyone in your family a brush. And you start mixing the colors. OK, first I'll show you this. Doesn't look like a galaxy yet, but it will. All right, so then you just start mixing your colors in. Woo! And you can paint swirly. There's some light. Oh, this is going to look really good. Ooh, awesome. And you just start mixing and swirling. And your whole family can take a section and mix those colors together, the darkness of blackness of space with some swirly supernovas in there. How about that? And it's looking good. A space galaxy painting. Fill in all your edges. Oh, I love this part. It's dark. It's colorful. There's stars out there. There's big black holes right in the center of the galaxy. And some blues and blacks in the blackness of space. Ta-da! And your whole family can take a little section and do their swirl part and mix their colors. And then you can do it all together. And you can smooth it out here and there if you think you like it. Woo! And I think I need some more fancy colors in there. I got some greens. Let's see. Let's see. What does this need? I think a little bit more reds and purples and oranges. And if you get it all swirled and you don't like it, you can do it again <laughs> right over the top of it. And where's that pink? I kind of like that pink. There we go. OK, here we go. More swirl. More swirl, more swirl, more swirl, more swirl, more swirl. And I'm going to smooth this out. Now, if you don't like a lot of the brush marks, you can take a sponge. And I'll show you that in a second. I got to go over to my counter and get a sponge. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with a sponge. You can take the edge of a sponge and go like this. And give it a little texture. Woohoo! <laughs> it's looking cool. And you're going to want to go around all the edges so those edges are all painted. I just don't want to make a huge mess. There we go. OK, so there's the beginning of your galaxy painting. But what you want is a little bit of some bright stars in there. So take a toothbrush, dip it in your white paint, and flick it. My white paint is not flicking. Just a minute. There. Now it is. Now I'm putting stars on my galaxy everywhere I want. Ta-da. And you can spend a whole lot of time putting stars all over your painting. <laughs> And all over the table, too, probably. So protect your surface. Have a lot of paper towel around. And there you go. There's a lot more stars in the universe than on my painting. But that's a good technique. And the whole family can paint together. And it turns out absolutely fabulous. There you go. Now, 
There's our galaxy painting. Let me hold it up. There. You can do this with tempera paint, too, but I like acrylic. It um, lasts a little longer. Okay, so there we go. All right, so our next activity for Shoot for the Stars is about constellations again. And I've printed out some different constellations, and we're going to talk about what they look like to you. So this one happens to be Leo, Leo the lion. What does that look like to you? <laughs> and, of course, my favorite, the Big Dipper. And Cassiopeia, the Lazy W. But what do these look like to you? Here's Orion. And here's another version of the Big Dipper. Well, when we print out the constellations, sometimes they print out the lines that connect the dots for you. And that tells you, you know, what, what people used to think they were. Orion the Hunter, ancient Greeks, um, came up with that one. But what do they look like to you? And we're going to try sort of an experiment. And first, I am going to do Leo the Lion. I'm going to take my printout, put another page over the top of it, and you can kind of see through. And if you can't, you can always go to the window, and the light shining through the window will show you where the dots are. And so now it's got the lines on it, the Leo the Lion lines, but we're not going to use those lines. We're just going to use the dots. So here I go. I'm going to take and put a dot on each one of the stars in the Leo constellation. And I'm not going to draw the lines in between them. OK, so then I have something like that. Hmm, what does that look like to you? Where would you draw the lines? Let's see. That is a good question. Well, sometimes I think it looks like an umbrella. Here's my take on it. An umbrella that got blown inside out <laughs> by the wind. So I'm going to use red instead of black. And I'm going to connect the lines like that and kind of make up my own idea there. And there's the handle. <laughs> that you're hanging on to, and my umbrella got turned inside out by the wind. Hmm, Leo the lion, broken umbrella, I don't know. So let's do the, another one. Um, oh, let's do Cassiopeia, the lazy W. She was a queen that they told ancient legends about. So again, I'm putting my printout down and I'm just doing the dots. Okay, just doing the dots. Check that out. What does that look like to you? You can come up with your own idea and draw something and I'll tell you what I'm going to draw. I've always thought that it looked like this to me. I'm drawing yellow through my dot. Looks like a bolt of lightning to me. I could come up with a story about something that got struck by a bolt of lightning. And that's Cassiopeia. Let's see, what other one should we do? I like Orion. So where's my piece of blank paper? Over the top of Orion. And there's a lot of dots to connect on this one. Can you see through? Oh, first I'm going to do the belt. Oops, that's the wrong color. Black, 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 black. Black for the stars and each part of Orion and his bow over here is what they say that was. And his arm up over here. Hmm, what are we going to come up with for this one? Wow. So, I just did the dots and no lines, and that is a little confusing. What should I do? Oh, I see Orion's belt, but I don't know. Hmm, what can I come up with? Oh, <laughs> I am going to use pink this time, and I'm going to do a smiley face and a nose and some eyes. 
and a clown hat. <laughs> and if I connect that dot to there, what is that clown looking at? So far I have a clown, but I don't know what to do with the edges over there. Let's see. How about if I go like that and like that and like that? Maybe he's blowing a horn, a clown blowing a horn. <laughs> so you can come up with what the constellation looks like to you. And it's kind of a fun activity to do and use your imagination. So I just have one more thing to say about shooting for the stars. If you get a chance to go outside on a really clear night during this holiday season, take your whole family out, dress warm, take a thermos of hot chocolate, dress in layers and go out where you can see the stars, maybe away from the city lights and look up and see if you can see some of those constellations and draw your own star patterns and have a lot of fun together and wonder about what's up there in the night sky. Do, 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 do. Lots of great things. <laughs> Connect your own dots. And thank you for joining us for Holiday Stream Fest. And we hope to see you again next time at some of our other wonderful programs. Thanks for joining us.